You're listening to Sussex Roundtable, a weekly conversational podcast that provides an inclusive space for debate and discussion around university-related topics, hosted by your student digital media gurus at the University of Sussex. Hello and welcome back to the Sussex Roundtable podcast. On this episode, we will be talking about the new term and what happened last term. My name's Sam Rahman. I'm a digital media guru. I'm a second year PPE student and I'm joined by some student connectors. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm a third year America study student. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm studying my master's in media production for development and social change. Hi, I'm Tatiana and I'm a third year media production student. So guys, for the listeners who don't know, what do student connectors do? So the student connectors are students who work together with staff to improve the overall university experience at Sussex, but there are lots of different kinds of projects going on depending on what is needed. Uh, Can you give us an example, Tatiana? Um, So basically I'm a student focus connector and I'm working within the School of Media Arts and Humanities and we're creating like a student-led project to bring together a closer sense of community among students and staff. So you guys like uh, organise kind of events for students with uh, staff? Yeah, well, we try and impose like different student events and different like ongoing schemes which can be kept up to improve the community among students and then among students with staff. Okay, cool. (laughs) I guess it must be rather hard to do this kind of um, stuff in lockdown, though. Like you have to do an awful lot of Zoom stuff, I imagine. Yes, it's a lot of admin and all the events kind of have to be online. So it kind of creates an extra difficulty to create a sense of community when people can't actually see each other. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, lockdown will end fairly soon. Well, within the next year. So we'll be <laughs> back to normal at some point, hopefully. Right. So um, we'll start off. Um, how was exam period for you guys? Uh, it's pretty, pretty frustrating, actually. Like, um... Like, my deadlines were right after the new year, so I had to be working on Christmas Day, like, throughout the whole holidays, and it was just a bit... It it was very frustrating. Um, But, like, I don't... Nothing really notable happens. It's quite hard for anything uh, interesting to occur when you're just, like, by yourself working on a laptop for days on end. I I can understand that. For me... um from about November-ish, from the start of the uh, second lockdown, to about now-ish, all the days have kind of blended into one. Um, it, every day seems like the same day, apart from Christmas Day itself. It's all just been like Groundhog Day. Yeah, pretty much the same. I also had an essay to work on, which um, was pretty like straightforward. But I had to do a multimedia project as well, which was quite new. And especially during lockdown, because we didn't really have access to like professional media equipment like cameras and mics and everything so for like tripods we had to like stack random objects and I don't know if you see the behind the scenes of the projects it probably looks very amateur and unprofessional but um, yeah I guess it was fun having to improvise a bit and adapting to the situation. We all, we could use our phones, like our phone cameras and our phone microphones and everything. So I guess it was okay. But compared to other um, previous classes, it probably doesn't look as nice (laughs) quality wise. Um, um, Tatiana, how did it go for you? Um, I'm the same as Sarah because I'm doing media production. It's a practical course. So I'm in a photography project and it was all just very, like the quality just wasn't great. And I wrote my proposal and I kind of had to state in that, don't expect this to be good. Like it should get better in the production stage next to if lockdown's finished and ended. But yeah, apart from that, I actually found assignments a lot easier to do. I've been home since November and there just isn't much to do here. So it's just kind of meant I've had like every day all day to do assignments and nothing else much because there's no <laughs> there's nothing to do um so like yeah I found assignments like less stressful because I didn't have anything else to do frankly university is quite low down on my list of responsibilities especially when I'm home you know like there's people that I gotta look after and care for I also work you know I've got 
I, I also still try and have a Zoom social life and what have you. I, I don't think I can fault people for wanting to, um, for having other priorities and things to do. And especially when like, um, not to make assumptions about people, but like when there's so much going on uh, in terms of the world right now and lockdown can be very isolating and stressful. Like it, for a lot of people, it's very difficult for their mental health and it's very difficult. And university is notoriously bad for mental health issues anyway. Um, lots of students have mental health issues uh, either develop or exacerbated by university life. And I think um, I, I can hardly fault people for putting it off and delaying it because it, it's difficult and it's stressful. I feel like you can get very much two different outlooks onto it. And the first lockdown, I did like nothing for the whole term. I think I did all my assignments like the two weeks at the end, which isn't that long for me compared to normally. Um, but like this time I kind of went to the other extreme and I was like, okay, my uni work's going to be my distraction. And so I worked on that a lot more. But like, yeah, I totally agree. Especially like when you have to, like so many people have to go back home and they have to go abroad and with travel restrictions and everything, it's kind of that extra stress during your assignments. Well, I would um, say that it's, it's about getting the balance. So if you're 24 seven obsessed uh, with your, assignments and it's not healthy it wasn't healthy healthy for me personally when I was doing that last term but on the other hand if you leave it a day or two beforehand with the assignments that doesn't kind of show good planning in, in one sense it's so it, to me it's about getting the balance um uh, but Rob you must uh, have a hard time when uni's usually on then it must be pretty difficult for you to juggle all those things uh, if we weren't locked down yeah, well, I mean, like, uh, in, in last year, especially, like, I mean, I, like, I have a lot of things on, like, I'm part of a lot of societies, and, like, I like I, I act, and I do a lot of other things, and it's a bit, like, um, and, and it does get quite intense, and, and honestly, when a lot is going on, I will kind of push you into the side, because, like I said, it is it isn't as important to me as, as a variety of other things, um, and, yeah, it, it is intense, but, like, um, that's just kind of, um for the most part most of those things are like responsibilities like things that i don't really have a choice about and the things i i do choose like the societies and social life it's like um you know they're, they're they're good for me in different ways and and are more rewarding and more interesting and and i, I get a lot out of them so i feel like um it's kind of necessary so um it's it's time consuming you know but uh that's that's just kind of the the I, I i still think that's kind of the best option for me right uh so going back on topic um is there anything you regret from the exam period or last term is there anything you've kind of rewind and change um i, I could have probably improved my social and like work balance i feel like i put a lot of time into uni and also um student connector work which also was fun so it wasn't too like stressful but um yeah maybe I could have done some more like zoom socials or something like that but um like exam wise or uni wise I don't think I regret anything if anything I feel like I had more of a balance <laughs> um because just having a lot more time um from not having to like go to uni and back that alone saves like two hours or something so I feel like I had a lot more time to just like uh, plan the days the way it works for me um, yeah so I quite enjoyed being in lockdown actually I feel like I kind of preferred that over going into classes every day but I also understand that it might, other people might feel differently about this and um, yeah kind of similar to what Rob was saying it got to the point where I just felt a bit like everything I was doing I wasn't passionate about I wasn't into it I was just kind of doing it because that's what I had to do um and like people on my course don't participate much with university online so like very often I'd be in a zoom class and I'd be like the only person with my camera on or like having a seminar being in a breakout room for a seminar and like discussing something by myself and hoping for someone to answer me um 
but then like over the Christmas holidays or just now because I've had my vocal assignments I've been watching podcasts and I've done like a few talks all related to like photography and media and things I'm studying so I kind of wish I would have done that before just to keep up a bit more motivation throughout my um throughout first term because like I said maybe about 50 times throughout the term I wish I would have dropped out I should drop out I'm in third year why do I still want to drop out and like I think that's what's quite hard about doing university online is just struggling to find motivation so I'm hoping now I'm going to like keep up all these like listening to podcasts and going to all these like online talks and stuff to kind of keep my motivation up with my university studies. So it's looking like this term will be online too. Um, any thoughts or on how to mentally or emotionally handle it? Did you guys find it difficult last time and how, how what was your kind of approach there? I think the thing that um, made the last two terms easier was um, was staying in contact with my tutors. Like um, if I had a problem with an assignment or what have you, or I just had a question or I had an idea, kind of emailing them, discussing issues, booking Zoom calls to, um, before, the, uh, before the assignment deadline so that I could talk things out. Uh, because I think one of the things... Um, uh, it can be quite intimidating uh, and quite isolating to have all these, this massive amount of work and all this big workload to have to do by yourself. And I think um, I think tutors, well, at least mine, in my experience, have been largely sympathetic to that and have been um, quite happy to discuss um, issues with me, which I've been very grateful for. Um, and I think we're all kind of we're actually kind of in the same boat. They're they're also feeling isolated and by themselves and I think it's um I think it's quite good to have this sort of this dialogue um and I think it it helps me engage with it a lot more when I know that like I'm I can talk to this to talk to my tutor about this and that and feel like okay I understand this a bit better like if, if there's a reading I've been struggling with I can go to someone and say like I don't understand I don't get this what is this um and I think I think like having that makes it a bit more engaging and I think um good seminars do that too i mean not all of my seminars are not good and um it's very hard to have good proper discussion about like an academic text or, or a book or what have you on zoom um because it, it is quite exhausting especially the three hour long zoom calls um but like it is it can be rewarding like I think at its best, university kind of is during, for me at least, is during seminars when everyone's like contributing ideas and coming up with things. But um, like was mentioned earlier, like a lot of people quite rightly struggle to engage at this time. They turn the cameras off, they don't talk in seminars and what have you, which is frankly fair enough because it's all a bit time and a bit hard. But like when people are all engaged and, and going to the seminars, um and discussing the things and with a genuine interest which is hard because not everything you study at university is actually interesting um yeah that that's fun and that that kind of that kind of kept me focused and going um yeah I, I think I felt the same way in um during my bachelor's in my final year when lockdown first started um but I think it might be because uh, People who do a master's genuinely do it because they are like interested in the topic they're studying and um, it's much more specific so I feel like uh, it, yeah people in my course are a lot more motivated and engaged than they were during my bachelor's which has helped a lot because our seminars are actually really interesting and um, yeah everybody contributes which is really helpful so I guess just like for next time, I'm going to try and make sure that everybody is clear on the submission guidelines and that we ask our tutors in advance to like put it up on Canvas so everybody's on the same page. And also for myself, I think I want to make sure to like um, plan my uni time, but also set aside self care and like making sure, like checking in with myself basically, even if it's just. Um, 10 minute stretches in the morning or like taking a 20 minute walk or something like it doesn't have to be long but just doing something regularly where you can sort of uh, take a break from uni I think that's really important as well 
Yeah, I really agree. I feel like the time throughout the term where I've kind of been more on top of my studies or like feel like my work is actually more effective is when I've got dressed in the morning. And like, I think this is something I've especially noticed since coming back Hey, where I just like sit in the same pyjamas for like three days on end and have occasionally gone like four days without showering, which is just a bit gross. But like at the start of Tim, I was very like motivated. I'd like get dressed every day. I'd make sure I'd like leave the house once a day. And it's like Sarah was saying, even if it's just like a 20 minute walk, that already is like a proper break or like a time away from screens too. Like I swear my eyesight has kind of decayed in this time um, from looking at a screen so much. So like just something little like going on a walk, I feel like makes a massive difference to like your well-being, but then also your studies. And it's not like, yeah, obviously it's good to talk to friends online and you should do that too. But it's just having that time away from a screen and like just moving a bit and not being sat in the same chair or like your bed all day. I think um, for me, it's personally making sure uh, my sleeping pattern is in sync. Like it's not making sure I have a proper kind of sleep and sleeping pattern um I always find my mental health goes kind of right downhill and it's hard for me to handle everything when I'm not sleeping and that's often when I'm on the computer for like, I know, 10 hours 10 hours a day I can't really get good sleep and uh that's kind of feeds into what you were saying Tatiana is making sure you kind of go for walks and get away from the computer screen when you can I also find that I wouldn't, I have to, I try and make an effort to talk to my family um, or talk to whoever I'm with. Because like before lockdown, you kind of kind of spoke to people you didn't even think about, you just did it. But lockdown, it's it's kind of harder to speak to people, even with like the Zoom socials. So I kind of put a conscious effort into making sure I speak to someone face to face in, in the day. And Obviously, because of lockdown, that's usually my family. I think it's important to to consider whatever study skills got you this far, and like rely on them. Like I think for the most part, uh, apart from maybe the the actual physical space where you can study, uh, like if you depend on the library, like the, the skills are going to still be there, whatever whatever you've been using previously. Uh, unless unless also you're kind of dependent on like working with other people and what have you. I think the the best advice I have in terms of university is if you can do the work, do it. And if you can't, don't. So looking at the kind of term ahead and what you've experienced, is there any kind of uh, specific study skills you wish to impart to your uh, to listeners? Um, like if you're not up to the task of of reading 300 words a week and attending like 10 hours of seminars to top that and doing like handing in 10,000 words on the same day towards the end of the term if you're not up to that like just try and do like the bare minimum you can to get by because I think the important thing is people got to remember their like their health and themselves and, and get through this like I think I think the important thing for me personally is that I'm learning something and I'm and I'm like opening my mind to new things um but like that may not be the same for everyone but I think it's just more just do what you can um and if you can do if you can do well and you can do a lot um if you feel up to that do that um study like 12 hours a day if that makes you content but don't like hold yourself to that standard if you can't do that because this is like a difficult traumatic time like I don't think um I think because we're all kind of sharing it, it kind of gets understated just how actually traumatic this is. Like thousands of people are dying every day. We're all kind of locking ourselves in our homes. It's all very, very difficult. And I I think we shouldn't forget that. And we shouldn't push ourselves beyond what we we feel we can do. Uh, And, and, you know, some people can do more than others in this time, but I think it's best to just know know where you're at, know your limits and just, just try and fulfill them. It's interesting uh, what you're saying there, Robert. Um, when I was I was studying something or studying what makes people work hard and what makes people uh, be really good at something, 
and it's usually that they like doing it. Um, so if they like doing it, they'll keep coming back to it. But feeding into what you were saying, that if you feel like you're forcing yourself to do it, you won't like it, and therefore you won't do it. So it, I think it's very much uh, about figuring out your limits and what you like and what you dislike. If you're forcing yourself to do <laughs> media production all day and you don't like doing media production all day, then it's going to be hard to enjoy yourself and hard to keep going past uni. It may even put you off doing it. Um, so Sarah, have you got anything to add on top of that? Um, yeah, I definitely agree with the fact that like you should take care of yourself and your health, like emotional, mental and physical before uni. Um, but that being said, I think it also helps to serve um, regularly attend lectures and seminars because, well, I find mine quite helpful, but that's probably because everybody is actually um, participating and like contributing to it. But um, I find it easier to keep my motivation up and like uh, keep my interest up as well by um, actually regularly attending these things. And um, also going back to what we were saying earlier about like, basically looking at a screen all day. I also thought that was really exhausting. Um, I got myself some blue light filter glasses, which I don't know if it's um, placebo, but I feel like it does help. So um, yeah, I think that was quite a good um, thing to do. And um, I'm also writing down my notes with like pen and paper rather than on my laptop. So I'm not, constantly looking at a screen. It's just like minor breaks, but um, yeah, I think that might help as well. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of going like the other way from that. Something I found like really helpful to keep me up with studying is kind of studying with people on Zoom. And I know it sounds a bit pointless because we literally do just like sit and steady and like we're both muted so we don't distract each other but I think just having that like one of my friends on zoom and knowing that we're like kind of studying at the same time it just makes the whole university study thing feel a lot less alienating. So looking forward um, and I think everybody kind of wants to talk about this is what is everybody's predictions for when lockdown will end and when the pandemic itself will end? Just generally, what are your predictions for the future? That's in a time scale. Yeah, yeah, and uh, vaccinations and all sorts. What, what's your outlook on that? Um, I, I think that uh, we're going to get everyone vaccinated and it's all going to be hunky-dory for like six months and then a new virus will come along. And it'll be even worse and even even deadlier. And so we no longer just isolate in our homes. We have to build bunkers underground and we start burrowing. And in like 20 years, we're like a race. <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah, I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I've been saying since the start, like, it's just a lot easier to take each day as it comes. And like, I know that sounds so like cringy and like cliche, but it's kind of just what you have to do. And the one thing I keep telling myself is like, this is supposed to be like a wave and it's going to go up, but then it's going to go down because that's what waves do. So like, even if Corona hasn't like ended for sure, at least like this wave will have ended. But yeah, I've been saying that since November and it just keeps going up and up. So I don't know, hopefully it'll end soon, but. It's interesting. I, a similar question was asked about six months ago in a kind of podcast with uh, just digital media gurus. And the answers were a lot more positive than the ones you were giving now. I'm of the opinion that uh, as a country, we don't seem to be able to um, socially distance uh, to the extent where we need to socially distance to uh, get rid of coronavirus or keep it under wraps. And I think the vaccine is really our kind of only way out. So I, I'm thinking that things will hopefully have some normality in September. Like we won't have another kind of winter wave next year. We'll have some kind of protection. Um, but coronavirus is around to stay. It's just whether it's how we handle it. Um, a bit like how the common cold is in 
around to stay forever. I was thinking um, that if this was to go on as bad as it has been going on, would you what would you consider doing next year? What what, what are your kind of plans if things continue like this? Um, I know some of you are third years, so would you consider doing masters or what, what's going on? I uh, wouldn't have enough time because I'd be too busy building my bunker. But uh, <laughs> if I if I if the time did arise. <laughs> And I found myself in a position where I, I could study as well as gather materials and supplies. Um, then I, I might consider doing a master's. I don't know. It's, it's hard to really think beyond the next week right now. Yeah, I think it's just really hard now. Like coming to the end of like uni, it's like a time where you're supposed to like either look for jobs or apply for masters or look for graduate schemes or like the one thing I've always wanted to do was go traveling that was supposed to be my backup because I'm like nobody can never stop me from traveling um but then corona came so I don't know I think it's just like really hard to decide what to do I've like applied to do to teach English in Switzerland for a year but that might not happen um and then like I feel like if I ended up doing an MA now it would just be kind of like my easy route because I don't know I feel like I still have a lot to learn and I do want to do a master's but I want to wait maybe like five years time or ten years time or something until I do it just so I make sure I make the most out of it um I don't know I think it's just really hard to figure out what to do when you're graduating maybe we'll just all be living in bunkers like Rob says that doesn't sound too bad then we don't have to make a decision (laughs) I actually went um and taught some uh Italian kids and Austrian kids English in the summer so I was thinking about doing that again this summer. Um, but I'm, I'm still not sure, especially since they're talking about closing the border, which is uh, pretty frightening for me. Uh, but Sarah, what about yourself? Um, I was in the same position last year um, where I finished my bachelor's and then I kind of took the easy role, which is why I'm doing <laughs> the master's right now. But I'm quite happy with that decision just because I feel like anything too life-changing at the moment I don't know if I would have been able to cope with that but for after my master's I'm considering going to Japan for a bit because um, I have family in Japan so and also COVID is a lot less intense or at least more under control there than it is here in Europe and the UK so um yeah, I'm thinking of just taking advantage of that and like kind of hiding in Japan for a little bit and see how it goes. So I, I personally, I'm a second year and I, I'm thinking about just doing a work year next year or something like that, because I personally don't want, like I've had this since I was half, maybe two thirds the way from my first year. So I don't want this to be like two and the third years from uni. Um, which is what it's kind of looking like right now. I guess I've done a good amount of work in second year because of lockdown, but I don't want this to be kind of my entire uni experience. That's where I am with it. Are we feeling optimistic about the future or pessimistic? From what I hear of you guys, it's fairly pessimistic, but... I mean, there's things to look forward to, you know, like like there's, there's always going to be good with the bad Um you know, there's not going to be enough good to make up for the bad, but like the bad doesn't negate the good. There's always things to look forward to. There's going to be, um, you know, like I, I get the impression we all still have some form of a social life, even if it is mostly digital. Um, you know, like there are there are still books and films and, and things coming out that are like interesting. Um, there aren't events or anything, um, but like... There are there are still things to to look forward to. I mean, like, uh, correct, like things things have generally been pretty bad the last few years preceding the coronavirus. Anyway, at least it, it, like in my broader social experience, um, things have been pretty rough. Like as child immigrants and whatnot, like it's been a kind of hostile atmosphere, and and it hasn't gotten any easier. Coronavirus is just kind of another thing. But like there have been good things in the last few years, and there have been good things in the last year. And uh, I think um, good things, like I said, uh, bad things don't negate good things and good things don't negate the bad, but like um, they can both simultaneously exist without undermining each other. 
Yeah, I think we can't deny that the situation is quite um, depressing right now. But I think overall, I do still look at the like from an optimistic point of view, just because, uh, as Rob was saying, like we, as a whole, like basically was already in a bit of a bad state, like leading up to COVID. So I'm hoping that this situation has sort of helped us and open our eyes or like realize things like think about things that we wouldn't normally think about and appreciate um, things that we have been taking for granted until now. Um, so I am hoping that like in the future, even though it might be the distant future, uh, there will be a good outcome that hopefully, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we can live a, a better life that is also more like sustainable. Just learn from our mistakes, I guess. Um, so yeah. I don't know if that's optimistic. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, obviously, the greater situation is just bad. And it, I don't know, I just feel like it is quite negative. But I am excited for the future. Like, I'm really excited to graduate and just kind of get out of Brighton. Or even if I stay in Brighton, just like live real life a bit more. I feel like, like uni is great, but you are kind of just stuck in this weird bubble of students where you're like constantly like, meeting people and like you have a lot of like I don't know I at least have a lot of free time and I don't know, I'm kind of excited to get into like the real world whether that's like through traveling or like doing an MA or working. I'm um I personally am fairly I'm pessimistic short term but I'd say I'm optimistic long term and that's because I think the party that we'll have once you virus is gone or not so prominent will be quite good um i i believe it'll be a bit like uh the kind of parties that happened after world war ii where we could kind of appreciate parties a lot more because we've been starved them for so long or mm -hmm. we could appreciate talking to people in big groups face to face a lot more because we hadn't had it for quite a while Thank you for listening to this podcast and thank you to our student connectors, Robert, Sarah and Tatiana. You guys are hiring, aren't you? Yeah, there are a few open roles right now. So if you want to get involved in the Connector program, then just have a look at Career Hub or on the Student Connectors Instagram.